Last week on the Lazy Scrapbooker Under Pressure, I successfully finished the album project. 162 scrapbook pages, two albums. And Jeff's retirement breakfast at work was a huge success. Those big tough firemen loved looking at the scrapbooks and reminiscing. Hi, I'm Donna Guest, the Lazy Scrapbooker and Creative Memories Advisor. I just planned, organized, and created an album to celebrate my husband's 25-year career in the fire service, and I did it in two months. And now you get to see it. Oh, that's heavy. I do not look good in hats. Now, the final episode of the Lazy Scrapbooker Under Pressure. After such a long project, I almost didn't know what to do with myself, but right away I did have a two-day visit with my mom in my hometown of Elberton, Georgia, home of the biggest and most awesome high school football stadium in the state, if not the world. Seriously, it holds 20,000 people, which is more than the population of the entire county. My sister Lori and I spent two days with our mom helping her organize her craft room and install pegboards for her punches and two calyx shelving units. Look familiar? Now let's take a look at the completed albums. Full disclosure, I'm editing these a bit by just covering up some of the photographs. For example, for the friendly firefighter at the different schools, I'm certainly going to cover up pictures of other people's kids. And rescue photos and newspaper article titles, some of those are a bit much, so I'll be covering some of those. Firefighters, they see a lot of stuff that's unpleasant, and I want to be respectful to any of the victims named or shown in any of those newspaper articles. During the planning portion over two months ago, I asked Jeff about some of those articles. Did he want to leave them out? Did he want to keep some of them in? And he thought about it and he said, well, it's part of the job, so you can leave it in. But you will still see the entire albums just with a few things covered up. What you won't see is a lot of embellishments and fancy layouts because, as I said in episode 10, simple pages came through for me. I knew that was exactly what this album project needed. So here we go. I am so thrilled to share these albums with you. I know it's what we've all been waiting for. I will tell you, I left the page protectors on. That was a job. So I didn't want to undo and redo 81 page protectors. So there's going to be a glare on a couple of spots here and there. I'll try to keep that to a minimum and also keep it well lit. But I just couldn't bear to go through that again. I'm sure you understand that. So here we go. All right, you've seen page one, Jeff, at a very young age back in 1999 when he first started. And I'm saving this spot right here to write something personal there to him from me since I created the albums. And, you know, you got to be prepared. you got to know what you're going to write because once you do it, it's done. If you did make a mistake, though, on this, you know what I would do? I would just get some pretty paper, write on it, and cover it up with tape runner. There's always a workaround for everything. These pages document his start with the fire department. I've got his initial applicant letter here. I've got, um, this is the recruit class here. It's got personal information there, so I covered it up. Then this hangs on the wall. I said decades later, a plaque with the 13 graduates hangs on the wall at the Marietta Fire Department. Here's where it started. They got a lot of newspaper coverage when they were going through their recruit class. I believe they started with 15 and it came, went down to 13. But these were super simple pages here because there was so much going on with the newspaper and the photos and the memorabilia. Just wanted to keep these simple. Then we've got more newspaper coverage and photos. And whenever there was a photo of several people, I just used a little arrow punch. And that was from an exclusive. I know people have asked me about that arrow to show where Jeff is. And I have to thank my friend Brenda, whose husband was also in his recruit class, for providing us with these, I believe. She had already done a scrapbooking, so you can see in her scans there's some little stickers and things there. But I'm so happy to have them. This was his recruit training burn. And I love this ombre paper that I used that you can see kind of goes from dark to light. And I thought it was very fitting for these pages. You'll notice on some of the pages, I did leave room for journaling. So if Jeff wants to come back and add some journaling, he can do that on the paper that I have, the lined paper. I still got a bunch of that. And I will add it into the album. I have told him that. So it does leave room for him to add some things if he wants to. Then we have his graduation ceremony back in... Goodness, 25 years ago. That He said, are you using this picture? I cut his head off the top of his head, but it's all I had. <laughs> that was before we had a digital camera, so it was what it was. And, of course, I had more than one of the programs, even before I was scrapbooking, but I was able to cut that in half so I could show both sides of it. 
I really love these pages, mostly for the photos, but also I just love this brick paper and using the tearing technique right there. I lost my tearing tool, the one from so many years ago. Can't find it anywhere. It's probably here in this mess, but I just hand tear a lot of these things. And again, that leaves a lot of room if he wants to add any journaling. And then here's family photos. And so I was able to make these pages a little bit prettier because it was photos of family. My mom was looking at these already and she said, oh, that's the card I gave him. So yeah, we kept everything. And so that's stuff that you can include in here. Gosh, I remember laying all this out back in, I guess, episode two when I started the power layout. Or was that episode three? I can't remember at this point. So here are the first pages of his years as a firefighter. And what I did consistently throughout the album was I would put the rank that he held and then the dates that he held that. So this is March 99 through May of 05. And I did that consistently throughout the entire album. And these very simple pages, I just got this beautiful brick background and the pretty border, but there's a lot going on here. We've got stickers, photos, patches, an ID card. I covered it up with personal information. Another ID, just a lot going on here, but it's a great bunch of keepsakes. And then just a lot of random photos here. These are not, not many of these are related to each other, but what I have here, these peekaboo pockets, he wrote, Jeff likes to write as well, just like I do, and he wrote a kind of a journal entry, a story about his first big fire that he was on. And it's really cool to look through that and see what he wrote back then, 25 years ago. So what I did is I had it printed somewhere, but I didn't have a digital copy. And so I just cut it out. It was in columns, thank goodness. Cut it out and put it in peekaboo pockets. And I've got one, two peekaboo pockets here and the rest of it on the bottom. And then here's some photos from training in 1999. This is my favorite ABC font. I think I shared that with you already. It's collegiate. I love it so much. And they've already retired the black. So, oh my goodness. Um, they still got the white though. But I used the boot punch here. You know, occasionally I had to do some fun scrapbooking things here. Because I know there's not a lot of other stuff. But this boot punch, I like it best when you punch directly on the full piece of background paper that you're using. And then underneath, I just put some black, a black strip right there. So it looks really good, better than if I had the white background underneath. But that's my favorite way to use the boot punch. Start with a full sheet of paper. You really get a better effect from that. Oh, there's that cute ladder. And you know, I never did make one out of silver, kind of aluminum paper, but I'm going to for the third album for the retirement. I've got to because they don't use wooden ladders, of course. But you know what? That's just how I thought of it. Here we have this one big fire that got a lot of newspaper coverage. He was in the paper there. So there's my little arrow. There's a picture that came out from that. That's a pretty cool photo. He may pick that one for the cover of album number two. We still got to do that. I've got to order that this week to get it back in time for his retirement party. And these are just some cool eight by 10 photos that he found at work that were just kind of in a drawer, nobody doing anything with. So he took them and here they are. But wow, I, I think they're incredible photos. So I had to use them. And these were super easy scrapbooking pages, weren't they? This was from a really old collection. I think a black and white collection, probably from the old CM, but it made a nice background. And I got those done super quick. I think that was that day I did 20 pages. These were part of that because there's four of them. And all I put was the name of the apartment community and the date of the photo. This page is Christmas of 1999. I went there and so we took photos in the museum and found one to use for our Christmas card that year. So I was able to use Christmas paper and these adorable foil papers with that old, old snowflake punch. And this was a newspaper article for a fire they had. And I just covered that up to, again to protect the privacy of the people in the paper. Here is that big composite photo that I found in episode one and realized that's not going to fit. I love the solution I did here. I know Jeff's going to get another composite photo uh, that's more current and we'll definitely put that in the retirement album because these two are full. He's in there somewhere. I think he's right there. So we have a bigger photo right here to show that photo. And I think this is some 4th of July paper, some type of, or maybe United We Stand, some kind of uh, Americana type paper, but it made a nice background because it definitely matches those shirts they had because <laughs> that's what's important, matching the shirts. Here's a fun page with just friends at the ball game and there we are 
on a dive trip with some firefighter friends in Mexico. Two of them were actually our dive instructors. And then here's his paramedic page showing some patches and more badges, ID tags. This looks like it's covering up something. It's actually not. I added that there and I can't remember why I added it. I think something forced me to. I think there was made a bit of a mistake underneath, but I said that was going to be for journaling. So now Jeff's going to have to come in here and journal something. I really used a lot of paper that had a wood look to it, and we have so much. Every collection we have usually has something that's wood in it, but I think this was from the pack called Timber that we had a while back, but these newspaper articles right here from a big explosion, and then over here, oh, this is one of my favorites. Now, that's not Jeff, but it made me very happy because I said this one made me happy. While that is not Jeff in the photo, Jeff did in fact rescue this cat from a burning apartment. He handed the cat over to Caldwell and went back inside. So Caldwell got the photo op, but Jeff saved the cat, who looked a lot like our Tabitha. So basically, Jeff saved the cat and went back into the fire. Um, and the other guy got his picture taken. But I was so happy that he saved this cat that looked exactly like ours. And if you've ever seen my pet scrapbook album uh, video, you've seen our Tabitha. And she did look like that. So that one definitely made me happy. Here are two pages on one big fire of a certain business in Marietta. So sad but lots of coverage. It's a pretty incredible picture. But again, simple scrapbooking because it doesn't need much. There's two background pages in a striking color. And then I really had to, you know, kind of work to get everything on the two pages. And, you know, I just don't feel right putting anything pretty or cute when someone is losing their business or their home. It just doesn't seem right to me. So I keep it pretty plain. Lots of training photos over here. I got six on a page. Don't really see my background paper, but it's actually, I think, from Wanderlust because it's roads. And that definitely uh, works here because one thing I didn't get that I wanted to put as a background were old maps. And we really didn't have any um, for the city that he worked in. That would have been pretty cool. But that's the closest thing I have to a map. And then here's a recruit burn where he was working. I see him here, here, in those pictures. He's in all these. He has these really cool little patches here that are very thin. I know I showed those early on when I was going through all the memorabilia in episodes one and two, and he actually has two sets. So I'm able to take the second set and use it in the third album where he took all those pictures with the six different crews. I've got all six patches. So every different station has their own little logo here. Like this one's a Roadrunner and it's station 52 and it shows the different apparatus that they have there. And I just put here on this little fold down page, Jeff is in the bottom photo on the roof. I'm not sure which one's him. I'm going to guess it's that one right there. I've been pretty correct when I'm guessing which one is him. Done pretty well with that. Here's my first page of You Don't See That Every Day. Oh, this poor woman in her home. Fortunately, she was on the other side of the house when this happened, but a truck ran into her house. So that was a rescue and some work they were doing there. And then here's several pictures of fire trucks around Station 52. And as I said in Episode 10, there is no such thing as too many photos of fire trucks in these albums. I proved that when I watched all these guys talk about the fire trucks in the photos. So <laughs> I'm glad I included them all. Hey, but this is perfect. There's that Wanderlust paper again that looks like a map. That's perfect for that. And this over here is just a simple block layout with one and two pieces of paper. And then I've got more photos under here with a peekaboo pocket. I used a lot of peekaboo pockets, as you know, and I used the tab punch to add this little tab in the matching cardstock so that it matches and shows you that the peekaboo pocket is there. And when they were looking at it at his retirement breakfast, they were lifting it up. They found those and they were lifting it up. And it was really cute because they would make sure they were in the right spot before they turned the page. Here are the deployment pages for 2003 when he was gone for that year. He got a lot of newspaper coverage there. And what's funny about this is that I took this photo. They did the Army 10 miler in Washington, D.C. There's the Capitol right behind it. It's a beautiful photo. I took the photo and all of these papers say photo special to the, and it has the newspaper name. So I got no photo credit for that and I really don't care. It doesn't matter. It's 2004 and he's back and I've just got some random photos here. And then we get into the training burn that if you remember this from the power layout, it started out like 11 pages and he's like, that's too many. So I think we got it down to seven. We'll see. But these pages are so simple and I love this type of paper, the ombre in the background. I wish we had more of that. I usually get those from the totally tonal packets 
they were in a lot of those. Works really well here. But I used this picture. It is out of order chronologically, but it was perfect to go on page one. And since this was just a training fire, I got to get cute and I used the campfire punch for every page in here. There is a few of these little flames. And so I have the date and the flame and I used it in orange and black. So it had a bit of a shadow behind it and you can see it. And these pages are so simple. All this is is two pieces of cardstock cut in half with the decorative trimmer, the wavy trimmer. And then I piece them back together so that you have red and orange. Makes a good background for this. So what's that? That's three pages. Here's four, five, Ooh, six, seven. Okay, I did get it from 11 down to seven. That's <laughs> still a lot. But these are the photos that I took. And I remember going there that day and seeing all this before Jeff was out there and asking someone, oh, do you know where Jeff is? Or, you know, firefighter guest or whatever I said. And they just, they said he's in the house, which I didn't like to see that. He was in a house that was, you know, on fire. But I got some great pictures of him. And so, hey, I had to use them all. And again, just cardstock, black, red, and orange cardstock. So simple. Because what we're looking at here is the pictures. And I had to use that boot punch again. More fire trucks. Plenty with a nice little simple block layout over here. I don't know why there are pictures of him painting a hose dryer, but I got them and they're in the album. That's a cool punch there. I think it was called Argyle. Really cool. And no, we don't sell it anymore. I think it was an exclusive, but I like that one a lot. I thought I was going to use just red cardstock. I mostly used a lot of shimmer paper because I love how it looks, but also that it's so light. This is the black shimmer paper right here. Here's some training at Dobbins Air Force Base. Good pictures there. And so one thing I have to point out, I know most of you love your two page spreads and I do too, but I love a single page layout. I do. I like it when the pages can be totally different like this and this. And I hope that seeing this, you're like, okay, it's not that bad. I can do that because sometimes I don't have enough for a two page spread. And I like to make the pages different from each other because it's two different topics. So this is different than this, but I did kind of coordinate them with the same paper colors there. Just two different designs. And this, I believe, I think I did cut this out so that I didn't waste all that. The 12 inch trimmer does all sorts of things. And then here's another one of those little patches there. Hey, and we've got the other ladder that I did with the wood print. So let me get this so you can see it. And so these are just from some training, lots of photos. He took selfies before selfies were even a thing. We've got so many of those. In fact, when I took this to his station, his last evening there, all the guys were looking at it and <laughs> one of them said, you really do take a lot of selfies. And Jeff said, well, that was something I would hope would, you know, stay a secret. So it, his secret's out. These pages, you may remember from the power layout. This is where Jeff was so helpful. I had them on two. And then he said, you don't need this. You don't need these pictures that aren't great. And he got it down to one page. And I was pretty impressed with that. But then we found some more pictures. If you remember in the episode, wait, there's more. We found more pictures. So it got expanded back to two pages. And I'm pretty happy about that because I was able to include everything. And here's that card, if you remember, that I just ripped apart and pretty much destroyed but I was able to fit everything in there. And then right here, I have a four by eight peekaboo pocket that has the program from that recruit graduation. He was instructor for that class. So here we have two more single page spreads and this was a double page spread back here, a very simple one, but it was a two page spread, but now we're back to singles. And this is just another newspaper article here. I've got the date up here. I've got the arrow pointing to him the journaling here and another separate fire right there. So these are two separate things right here, but you can do that. You can mix it up because you know, I was trying to get everything really squeezed into a lot, a lot of pages, a lot of stuff into fewer pages. Now over here, this was his promotion to firefighter engineer or driver as it's known. And then of course, I was consistent. I have the years that he served in that role. And the journaling reads, on May 22nd, 2005, Jeff was promoted to engineer. And on June 1st, his 36th birthday, Nathaniel was born. So within almost a week, he got a promotion and a baby. That's a pretty great week. This is another back of his badges. It's got personal identification numbers on it. So I covered that. But then I did have an arrow and a caption that reads baby. In case you weren't sure. Look at that sweet baby. Lots of training photos here, and I've got my little arrows pointing to Jeff. 
Cool photos though. And I was able to get two more sheets of that red ombre paper from Totally Tonal. And that's it. That captions and arrows. That's it. But you know what? It looks good. It's what it needs to be. This album needed to be simple. This is a two-page spread of a lot of newspaper coverage for one fire. And I've got a lot of this covered up because it's a it was a sad one. So um, I asked Jeff if he wanted this in and he said, it's part of the job. Yeah, you can put it in. But it is really a great effective block layout where I was able to get all this on two pages and then just fill in the gaps with some dark paper. That really rough fire on the previous pages was followed the same shift by another really rough fire here. So I was able to get all that on one page. Someone had a photo and then we had the newspaper coverage. And then another fire. And, I, you know, I honestly don't know where these photos came from. Jeff appreciates photos and scrapbooks. So I think when they were just photos that were, you know, didn't have a home, he would, was always glad to take them. Ooh, I love these pages. These were actually left over when I was working on a video and I had a, a separate copy of something I did for a video and they were perfect for these honor guard pages and honor guard is something they started at his fire department where they would go and present the colors. As you see, they do it a lot in parades. They would go to funerals of former firefighters. They had a lot of things like that at different ceremonies, things like that. So he was on that for several years and here are some of those pictures. So he was thinking it could be one page. I'm like, oh no, it's got to be two pages. There's so many pictures from that. And I even needed a peekaboo pocket. This is two different years, but I got them all in. And I had to do a fun fussy cut of him holding Nathaniel after the parade. But I love this technique here. And I do have a video of this on my channel about mitered corners. And when you have a striped piece of paper right here, it works so beautifully. So I did that all the way around to right there fun golf tournaments. These are several years of golf tournaments here and I was able to use our on the green embellishments and those fun collegiate letters in green. And then the paper came from, I believe, back to school texture. It's a special pack that had all these different sporting papers in it. Very simple, very simple, but hey, it works. And I got all the pictures on the pages. Oh, my cute little pizza. Look at that. And you know, I, I was so amused by this when I was doing the power layout because there are three photos in the newspaper articles about the business association, you know, showing appreciation. They took pizza to the fire department, Jeff's in every photo. So I love that. <laughs> but this was fun to make. I should do a separate video just about making that pizza. But you know how I did that? The lifter stick to put those little pepperonis on so quick. And I just cut it with a pair of scissors. Christmas visits. Oh, this is a fun page layout. I know I have a video on that, I think, on my channel, or at least my TikTok channel. But fun how to do that little triangle right there. This is a cool thing that you can do with one sheet of paper if you like both sides and they have a nice contrast like these do. So we had some fun visits with Santa on the square and then went by the fire department to see dad at work and took our photo for our Christmas card. And I love that one. I love how he has his little head leaning over on Jeff's shoulder. So sweet. And of course, a chance to pretend to drive some of the fire engines in the museum. You don't see that every day. Part two. Oh, bless this woman. She backed her van off of a retaining wall out of a CVS, I believe, and onto another vehicle. So they had to rescue her with a ladder truck here. So not only did she do that, but she got her face on the front page of the paper. Bless her heart. I'll at least keep it private right here. Then we have more training photos. And more training photos with this super simple layout. But look how little paper I use. That helps keep your album light. And I needed to put all eight pages here. And they fit so nicely, giving me that nice little one-eighth border between all of them. I just love that. Oh my gosh, we're to the last page of Volume 1. Just photos from a fire call. Okay, there's Volume 1. And here's that beautiful back cover of my sweet guys in one of those parades where they let the families walk along. Not me. I was watching. Okay, are we ready for Volume 2? Okay, here's volume two, and I will have to do a follow-up video definitely to show you the finished retirement album and also to show you what we chose for volume two's album cover because I will do a custom cover on this. For right now, it's just in this Navy album cover. So here we go.
Again, I write another inscription here when I know exactly what I want to say. And we start this album in 2009 with some of the professional photos they did at the fire department. And a cool patch right there. Oh, I love these pages. If you remember from the power layout video, when I was going through this, I was showing the community pages and it really turned out great. So it's so nice when they're so appreciative of being given tours and things like that. This wonderful um, bunch of kids made this card. So first, this is from a letter from a preschool thanking Jeff, which I thought was so nice. Then I just got this covered up because they included their photos on here and they're so cute, but I won't show them on here. But it was a card. And what I did here is I, let me see if I can do this without uncovering. I used an eight and a half by 11 pocket page. And with all these 12 by 12s, because the staples are in the same place. So I was able to keep their card intact, showing both sides and and keep it you know fitting really nicely so i did cut the card some here's the other side of that in that precious and this right here was sticking off the top of the card actually it was sticking out of the 12 by 12 so it wouldn't even fit in a 12 by 12. so i was able to cut that and keep the whole thing in from this group of boy scouts or cub scouts which i thought was so sweet and here i was able to use some of the cutesy little fire stickers that i won't use anywhere else but it's perfectly appropriate here I love these pages so much. Now, I've had to block out a couple of pictures because um, there's lots of little kids, but this is when Jeff went to Nathaniel's preschool when Nathaniel was still just three and did his friendly firefighter presentation. And I'd never seen this before, but I was the one there and I took these photos. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. And I realized how important this is, this type of education, because if a child is being rescued from a fire, and this guy comes in that looks like a monster that makes monster sound. It sounds like Darth Vader with the, you know, air mask on. It's quite scary. And, you know, I guess in the past they've had children run from firefighters, which is the opposite of what you want to happen. So I watched Jeff do this presentation and train these children. I thought it was absolutely wonderful how he showed them how he got dressed to put on all the scary clothing and, you know, you could see their little eyes get big. And then he took it off and said, hey, it's still me. It's still Mr. Jeff. And it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. So he did that for Nathaniel's class. And Nathaniel was so excited to have his dad there. Really, really sweet. Oh, the paper I used was like building blocks. And then some from the back to school annual collection that's now sold out. Oh, you remember in episode two or three, whenever it was, there was a debate between Jeff and myself of how many pictures or pages we needed a friendly firefighter. So from this other preschool, Actually, this was a daycare that Nathaniel went to after school in their after school program. And so Jeff went and did some of the training for the smaller kids. And he did the larger kids as well. Nathaniel got to see it again. But I thought these pictures were incredible. And I wanted to use them all. Because he was criticizing, saying, this is my helmet on the floor. That's a patch. But I think they look great. I think it's cool. I didn't do anything to these pages except for these stickers right here. That's it. But all you see are the photos and the cat walking across them. And here's page three and four of that same Friendly Firefighter presentation, and I stand by my decision. So I've got a peekaboo pocket over here, and there's just lots of pictures of the class watching the presentation there. And all I did here were stickers here, and I love these stickers here. I only had one 12 inch, so I made it work by putting the pictures above. So sometimes when you just have one you think you need two, you only need one. It turned out pretty great, though. Oh, I love these pages. They kind of look alike, but they are separate pages. Here we have visits over here throughout the year. We've got March. We've got September of 2009. Really cool. And then over here we have a page that says, this is Halloween. And this is when Nathaniel dressed as a firefighter. That costume is pretty authentic, I must say. I was sad when he grew out of that. So we went to visit dad at the fire department who was working and had our picture taken and even got to climb up on the rescue truck and walk around. That's a pretty cool picture, though. Two completely different pages. If you only like two-page spreads, I'm really upsetting you right now, I bet. <laughs> These are so different. So we've got training over here with my little arrows pointing to Jeff. And then over here, what a bad day to go to the Whitewater Park. It caught on fire. And so I looked at this photo and I said, wow, the beach towels are still there. Everybody had to evacuate and leave all their belongings. Jeff did tell me they let them back in, though, to retrieve their things. But the park was shut down for the rest of the day. That's a bummer. 
He was one of the recipients of a proclamation for a very good rescue. And so he had that and hey, I saved it. I saved his copy and we put it here. It gets its own page. And then here we have some random photos from around. And this is a cool photo. If you're from Metro Atlanta, if you're familiar with this, it's one of the biggest landmarks that we have in Marietta, where Jeff works. The Kentucky Fried Chicken is known as the Big Chicken, and the beak and the eyes move. But Station 52, where he spent a lot of years, was responsible for keeping the Big Chicken safe. I do remember he told me they'd had a call there once. There was a fire there. And he remembers his battalion commander saying over the radio, somebody needs to come and get a hose up in this chicken. That's all I could say. There's no other way to describe it. Two more completely different pages. Here we have his promotion to lieutenant and the dates he served in that position. I love that picture. So cute. He got the new helmet. They get a red helmet when they make lieutenant. So he was excited about that. And this is just a random picture from around that time of our family at some event in Marietta related to the fire department. And just more random pictures from around the fire department. So Nicholas clearly does not know the word no, but in his defense, Nicholas is a completely deaf cat. I don't think he knew that. I don't think I've shared that before. He's not old. It's not because of that. He was deaf when we first got him when he was 12 weeks old. Because of that, he is one of the most chill cats you will find. You can drop something right in front of him and he doesn't care. But I'm going to have to remove him right now. Here's an example of how I could not have done this without Jeff's help. So I just had a stack of completed pages on the table and he just walked by and saw this one. I had this with the letters and the matting. It said Ranger Day, SWAT Ranger Day. I read his handwriting incorrectly. So he said, by the way, that's just Range Day. And of course, my answer is always, I can fix it. I can fix it. And I did. Easy fix. But that's a pretty simple page. It's just three pictures. Sometimes we can do that. If you want to keep the whole thing in, it is... Easy to do that. There's no paper underneath. And I have just six inches of paper over here with the camouflage background there because it seemed appropriate. And it matches the clothing. Also important. And then we just have some random training pictures. I think this one actually might be a fire here. And that's Jeff right there. I can't remember. No, that's training. It's training. If in doubt, I got to look at the caption there. Two pictures on a page. What was I thinking? So I had to put this patch there. More training, and there's our cover photo right there. And then I love this page. I actually used the Showtime collection when he was awarded Fire Officer of the Year. So I've got the program here, and I've got pictures of us. We were with him as well. So proud of him. And here's one, another one of the patches when he moved to Station 51 as a lieutenant. And then just random pictures here from visits. And this was their birthday when we went to visit. They had the same birthday. And I remember this birthday. Jeff had to work on his birthday. Nathaniel got the coolest day. It's during the summer. We went, and I'm not kidding you, I gave him a list of things we could do, and he was allowed to pick three or four of them. What he picked, we went to Six Flags for a couple of hours. We ate at his favorite restaurant, Stevie B's Pizza at the time, which is eventually you know, shut down, probably because it was all you can eat, and they lost money on that kid. And then we went bowling. Then we went to a movie. And then we went and got some desserts and took him to Jeff and his crew at the fire department. That was a pretty great birthday. I have a lot of photos from the fire museum, which is at Station 51. They have amazing, amazing trucks there, including this, the Aurora, which is from 1879. And it's so beautiful. It looks like it's brand new. Amazing. So I have a postcard of it. So I just used a peekaboo pocket just to preserve the postcard there so that I wouldn't have to attach it to a page. It's just floating in that pocket. And again, I used um, from the back to school texture. This is obviously for theater. I thought it was appropriate here with these black shimmer papers. Looks really good. And again, selfie, selfie. He's not shy. I'll say it again. There can never be too many photos of fire trucks in a fire career album. Trust me. So here's another one of those patches and a beautiful block layout here that works so lovely. And this is just on a plain red paper, but it's the same red paper as I have over here. It's just not a block layout. So different, but the same. And then we have another promotion and he moved to station 56, which is one of his favorite times during his career to captain. And I got these stickers, not sure where I got them, where he got them, but I have the dates here of when he was in that position. He only was in that for a little over a year. And funny enough, that was his favorite time was that year. 
I love that brick paper. And I love black shimmer. I used a ton of that. I love these pages from Father's Day at that station when he was captain. All the families came for Father's Day and we had this amazing lunch. So fun. And then, of course, after we ate, but at least that we'd already eaten, they got a call. So they had to leave. So we're just able to wait around. But love these pictures of Nathaniel. He looks so happy there. Who wouldn't be? A little boy in a fire truck? But these are actually, I think, leftover from something else I had done. I decided not to use. So it needed to be on a page where I didn't have a lot of photos because I wanted to see all this pretty border here. And I used it for the title and the date. And this is a perfect time to use those cute little stickers since it seems totally appropriate. But I do have a video on how to do this type of page. It's one of our Savvy Scrapbookers videos. Oh, what beautiful pages. These are probably the prettiest pages in the whole album because, you know, it's snow days. I was able to use a punch. And I think I talked about this when I was working on it, doing this, starting this with an 11 by 12 piece of paper. But the reason I have this is because I did talk about this. He always had to make sure he could get to work, even if that meant going in the day before. Very dedicated. So this is a picture of his little air mattress that he went in because he wasn't on shift yet. So there's nowhere to sleep. He went in the night before to make sure he was there because here in Atlanta, when it snows one inch, <laughs> if there's any ice involved, I mean, it's just chaos. It is chaos because most people don't have a four-wheel drive or snow tires or chains or whatever you have to have or or experience driving in that type of weather. So lots of wrecks, lots of accidents, and he certainly wanted to make sure he was at work. In his speech at the retirement breakfast, he mentioned the snow. He told a story about how, you know, I was always sad when it snowed. I thought the snow was so beautiful. I'd look out the window. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. And he's like, I hate the snow. I hate the snow because the snow meant always stuff going on at work and he had to be there and he had to leave. And so he said, one day I'll be able to look at it with you and say, I love the snow. And he said, that day has finally come. So hopefully we'll get some snow now. It doesn't happen often in Atlanta, but those pages are really beautiful. It They match better than they look on camera. I noticed when I showed it in the last, when I was working on it, it looked like this was bright blue. This is a very dark blue that matches this, those dark snowflakes, but on camera, it looks weird. This is him at work. Oh, that's a really cool picture right there. Here he is working a wreck. Um, here he is, his last fire as a captain. They always keep track of the last one. And why that's significant that it's his last fire as a captain is because once he goes to the next role as assistant chief, um, battalion commander, it's a d completely different ball game at that point. You're doing different things. So I gave him one page for goodbye 56 because he loved that station and that crew so much that he took pictures. See, he's, he's a scrapbooker at heart. I'm telling you, he took pictures of the station and he said, you don't have to use all that. But I said, oh, I'm gonna. Thanks to Peekaboo Pockets. And then here's his promotion, more beautiful black shimmer, his promotion to assistant chief. And he first worked in the training division for two years in that role, which meant he moved to a Monday through Friday job from eight to five. So like just a normal person, which was, you know, he's done that a couple of times when he's worked in training in the, you know, in the administrative part of the fire department. He doesn't like that as much. He liked the 24 hour shift. He liked that job better. So I was happy when he went back, but he took a picture of all three of his helmets. He got a new helmet that was white. So there's all three helmets. I saved his business cards. Here's an image of the memo, a very small image of the memo that was sent around when he was promoted along with some other people. I said, Jeff got an office, a take home truck and the ability to have lunch with us. So occasionally we would go and meet him for lunch, which was cool because as a firefighter, you don't do that. You're there for 24 hours. The guys eat together. You don't go out to lunch. But in this role, he could. So it was kind of neat for two years. It's funny. He, I didn't know we had this picture and he did not take this picture of the truck that he got to take home. He took this picture because there was a hawk on top of our basketball goal. <laughs> so I just used it for this. Oh my gosh, love these pages. So this was public safety night at the Atlanta Braves Stadium back in June of 2018. And now our little guy is starting to grow up. He's about as tall as me there. And Jeff and some others represented the fire department. And there were a lot of fire departments represented. And he was the assistant chief there. So he got to actually have the privilege of going on to the field. What was funny, though, is when they confirmed his name, because they would announce his name and show him on 
the big screen. How cool is that? But his name is easy. It's Jeff. It's J-E-F-F. -F. And there it was, plain and simple, Joey. Joey Guest. J-O-E-Y. Joey. So they said Joey and they printed Joey on the screen. So we got a good laugh out of that. And you could see him kind of chuckling right there on the screen. He had a good sense of humor about it. And I, of course, had to immediately text him with, how you doing? Of course, I knew he would get the Joey from Friends reference. And of course, I wrote it, the story here, and I called him Joey for about a week. But I, let's just admire what a beautiful block layout this is. I know it's my favorite layout, and it's so perfect for these masculine scrapbook pages, but I use the baseball paper, which Creative Memories, when we used to have the Grand Slam theme pack, I miss it. That is the best baseball paper you will ever find. It's fantastic. So beautiful block layout here. And then we have more photos as he worked in training as the training chief and more selfies, simple pages, two different pieces of paper, but the same border. And that is the cable chain, I believe from the border maker system. And I just did it in black and I did it in like a platinum behind it or a gray to give it a little bit of a shadow. I love these pages. Everything's matted, which is very unlike me because <laughs> I'm usually too lazy to mat, but it looks so good on this wood paper. And then I used the chevron border and I punched it directly into the paper, kind of like I did on the boot prints border punch and then put some black shimmer behind it. So that just looks cool. The infamous fa la la la. So I showed that in two different episodes, one where I accidentally put regular tape runner all over. And then when I put it down, I was able to use the multi-tool to push that out of the way. But it looks really good. This is the page where I got several holidays on one page. We have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, and we have July 4th, a few years later. Yeah, these are three different years here. But it works. I just kind of put some a space and some stitching there. Two different borders. It works. Cover the photo there. It's a scrapbook. It looks good. Ooh, I love this. I just love the tearing technique. It looks super good here. And yeah, that's a selfie. He's a selfie king. I love these pages. When Jeff was the training chief, he hosted the recruit class graduation and awards night and did a phenomenal job. I know I might be biased, but I'm really not. He was fantastic. This is a very simple layout. I like this with just the strip behind it and then the memorabilia here and the photos on the edge. I had to trim them down a bit to get them on, but it was mostly just sealing up there. Look at all the selfies. So this is when he moved out of the training chief role and became battalion chief over C shift, which is so much responsibility where 51 through 56 are the numbers for each station. Uh, Jeff's number as the battalion chief is 501. Oh, and I mentioned this a couple of times in the series where I went to the website to get the right title or whatever. I figured out, hey, I should print out on good paper his bio on the website. So I was able to include it here. And of course, I've got the dates from when he was battalion chief from April of 20 all the way to March of 24. So four years. More amazing selfies. Again, he's not shy about a selfie. Of course, I took those right there. Here's one of those cool torn layouts that I just love so much with that brick. It's like exposed brick. So this is called the Blitz, and it's the workout they have to do maybe two, sometimes three times a year, I think. And so I've got it typed up what they had to do this time that he did it, how many minutes he did it in. It does not look fun or sound fun. And there it was written on some dry erase board there. And they do it all wearing all that gear. I went to this with him. His crew was nominated for a public safety award. So there was a ceremony for the county. And so I cut out the program. I really chopped that up to get all of this onto one page and it worked. It's all just on a scrapbook page. It's, I remember doing this in the series going, they can't all be winners, but you know what? This looks fine. Looks pretty good. These pages look great. Very simple, nice little border at the top and the photos are placed nicely. Just looks good. 
and I use the write on journaling stickers throughout this album, as you can see, to identify dates and people and places. All right, here are pages I called Rex and Rescues, and I've covered up some of the more rougher looking ones, but I've got peekaboo pockets under here that show different photos that were taken during these rescues. And two more pages of those with more peekaboo pockets. And then we have some pages on fire calls. And I just grouped all these together from the time when he was battalion chief. So the albums are somewhat chronological, but not completely. And what a glorious block layout this is. Looks pretty cool. And I did it a little bit differently where I even had blocks next to each other in different colors just to work with the photos and the memorabilia that I had. And more. And I forgot to put a title over here. I think I need to go back and do that because this whole page is a Burger King. One idea is to print out their logo and put it right there perhaps. I cannot get enough of this brick paper. It really works well with these type pages. I think that's my favorite picture on this page. I've got the arrow pointing to him in the white shirt doing his job. Oh, and over here, here's just other incidents. Over here is where I did the first QR code. I know I showed that in the last episode. Love that. Looks pretty cool. So I got some questions about the QR code. What it is, is if you hold your phone over it, you know, it's going to take you to a website. So they work with websites. Like you've been at a restaurant, you've had to hold your phone over a QR code to see the menu. This is for a YouTube video. So that's a website, but it takes you to a YouTube video, which is a news report about this particular fire. And I've got some more over here. And they're about this fire here. And this is his last big fire. So we made a special page for that. And I said right here, I can't imagine rolling up on this and having to take charge, but that's what he did. So this video right here is just news footage without any commentary of this fire. And it just looked awful and I can't imagine going there and having to be in charge and direct people of what to do. And then here we are on annual awards again where he was a presenter presenting awards. I know I talked about this and having to tilt those and move them around and get the spacing just right because you know I didn't plan ahead. Again there's no such thing as too many photos of fire trucks. So I used a 6 by 12 peekaboo pocket on this one and let me slide this over boom now I have an extended page so it starts like this and it ends like that how cool is that and we still sell these and I just attached it right here to the page protector so you just open that up I did not put a tab on it I still could and now we got let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine pictures on one page and then I've got this page around the station, just random pictures he took while at work. I like this from his point of view. Just all the guys sitting in a circle in the bay, just chatting while they had some downtime. And again, those pages are super simple. And with most of these, I pretty much have a piece of paper and some dates and a lot of ABCs. If I have to tell you, the one thing that took me the longest, I think, on these albums are applying the ABCs. I really do. I think that to, I think that's why it took me longer than I thought it would to do these pages. I love doing them. I find it very relaxing, but they do take a minute, and I do so many of them. So these pages are called The Big Game, and anytime one of our sports teams is playing in a championship, they really do celebrate it. So for this one, the University of Georgia, which is my alma mater, I uh, was playing for the national championship, and I think a couple of times, we won it a couple of times in a row, but of course they wore the hats, they've got the magnets, and I love this one. This is his dinner and view of the TV while they're watching it in the room at at work, in the TV room, and then within, you know, a few minutes, they did have to go on a call, so they didn't get to watch the whole game. That's pretty typical. They've got the Falcons flag on it when the Falcons were in the Super Bowl. That one did not end so well. Even Atlanta United is represented with a flag there, the soccer team. And of course, our favorites, the Atlanta Braves. So I love this. This is an email that Jeff got to send when he requested it was his idea and the chief approved it for them to wear instead of their Marietta Fire Department hats, the Atlanta Braves hats with their uniform. And so that was his email to everyone. And I love that he put at the end, Houston Astros hats are strictly forbidden. Of course they are because <laughs> we're in Atlanta.
Well, we're close to Atlanta. Marietta is about 20 minutes from Atlanta. But the Braves play in our county, in Cobb County, so we are very close to the Braves. More photos. I call this the home stretch. These are post-it notes he started keeping. That means 15 months to go. He was keeping that 15 months ago. Wow, this is a great block layout. I remember showing this in the last episode that it was going to be a block layout because I got six pictures on the page. And that's all I needed to add. I just added that brick. It looks so good. That's a fun page over here, and it's a great one-page layout. You could certainly adapt this to two pages, but I like this look. It's just a simple page. I added some triangles like in the old days and then put a border of one of those laser borders on there. And this was our last Thanksgiving where the families came up for an amazing dinner. And so I was able to do something cute because I only had three pictures. Here we are. I think it's our last family picture before his retirement breakfast. Oh, the celebrity pages. Of course, in last week's episode, I had to do a shout out to my sister, Lori, because she used to love Eric Estrada. And so he met quite a few celebrities uh, doing different things. And what I did here is I did a peekaboo pocket, a four by four, and I typed out actually how it was that he came to meet these. For example, he met Chips actor Eric Estrada at a conference in Atlanta, which is really cool because he was a fan. Now, Nathaniel was looking through here and he said, what's Chips? He didn't recognize that. And I said, it is a TV show from the 70s about motorcycle cops who wear tight pants. <laughs> and that is pretty true. <laughs> I think this whole side are all Atlanta Braves. I love these pages. I love a good obnoxious 4th of July page. So fun and so festive. Very colorful. But he was in several parades, of course, and three times Nathaniel got to walk with him because they would let families or typically kids walk with him. So I took pictures. Now, I did not take this beautiful picture that's on the back cover. That was taken by a photographer with the Marietta Daily Journal. And here it is on the website. It was in the paper. And I did pay to get a JPEG of that photo. Totally worth it. But these pages are fun. So just a little border sticker there and border stickers there. This is a cool one because I didn't put a wavy cut in the paper, but the sticker makes it look like I did. So really fun. And this photo of Nathaniel, he was leaning against the truck, so you couldn't see his hand. So you know what? I just stuck balloons over it so it looked okay. More parade pictures. These are from 2019. Oh my gosh. Are we at the end? Oh, just like my mom said when she looked at it, she said, I'm sad it's over. So here is the last page right here. I love that picture. And then we're going to have another album and I'll have something on the last page. So I'm really happy with these. I hope you've enjoyed looking at them. When I look at them, I just, I don't really focus on the papers and things as much. I know I did here during the flip through, but I'm just looking at the pictures. I know that's what Jeff is looking at too. So they turned out better than I thought they would. I'm really, really happy with them. It's got so many pictures in here, so many memories. It's just a really great collection of all the photos and memorabilia and accomplishments from his career. So I'm really proud of having done this for him and I know he loves it and will always cherish this. Jeff is really fortunate to have this many photos of his career, yet all the photos you see here are just a small fraction of all the fire calls and rescues that he's worked in the last 25 years. I am so incredibly proud of him. What a truly noble career he has had. Oh, and on Tuesday, when I finished editing the album flip through portion of this video, I asked Jeff to send me two pictures that he chose for the custom cover for volume two, and he did. And they were both used in the album already, of course. And one of them he sent me, it was a picture that someone from admin took while he was working a fire as a battalion commander. And it's a really cool photo. And I remember saying, this is my favorite one on the page. But when he sent it to me, it was an unedited version, uncropped, and it was bigger. It showed not just him and a few firefighters, it showed the entire scene, which, so much going on, so many people, and I was just so proud of him because he had to be in charge of that. So we're going to use that for the front cover of the second album, but it can only be a square, so it's got to be cropped some. But I did tell him, I said, I'm going to reprint that photo so I can use the original version in the album and I'll just replace it. And then he said, well, I've got more photos from that fire that admin took. More photos. But I can totally handle that. 
all I need, maybe a peekaboo pocket or two. So I said, bring them on, send them on, I'll get them in. At some point though, the photos have to stop coming. I mean, I finished the album and the video series about the album. So trivia question, and I did a fun little teaser on my YouTube page earlier this week to see if you can guess how many tape runners that I used for this album project. How many tape runner refills did I have to use? Any guesses? And the answer is 14. I'm surprised it's not higher. Thank you for joining my family on this journey. Making these videos while completing the album project was a blast. It definitely added more time to the project, but it was totally worth it. I loved hearing how you were inspired to use the power layout or how you were no longer afraid to start that big album project. That makes it totally worthwhile to me. So from me and on behalf of Jeff, Nathaniel, and my oh-so-sweet, adorable little sidekick, Nicholas, we want to thank you for being part of this. Your engagement and support definitely made it a lot more fun. Oh, and by the way, Nathaniel is a senior in high school and he's graduating on May 24th and we're having a party for him the next day. And there are albums to be made.